now's time for you to talk or share your uh, teenage years. Uh, let's start with 13. What happened at 13, Mommy? Well, at 13, my dad passed away unexpectedly in the middle of the night with a heart attack. <laughs> and my brother Jim, <laughs> my hero, <laughs> and he had that was when he got drunk and hit the cop and went to jail. So that became my job then to run the filling station. And my mom, who, my mom ever, never ever wore a pair of jeans. She always wore a little house dress and an apron. And she'd go out and try to pump gas and that just didn't fit her. And in that day and age, people expected you to check their oil, wash their windshield, do all that stuff. It was, I get so aggravated with people because I didn't know where their oil stick was and I'd pretend like I knew all the stuff <laughs> on a car. I <laughs> kind of drove down the block and fell apart. I didn't. <laughs> but anyhow, I survived that. And where was that? Well, going? Mommy, where were you um, on Halloween night? As a teenager. Somewhere out in the country. We had an old, old truck that we put a tarp over it and we, that was our party house. <laughs> and Me it, and, the, and the three cowboys. Yeah. Yeah, I would, I would run with three. That was partly why my dad and I got in a fight because he didn't think I belonged with four cowboys. They were all my big brothers, my protectors. Yeah. Is Jim one of the boys, the cowboys you ran Oh, yeah. With? yeah it's okay. Jim and his two buddies. Uh -huh. But they took me in like I was a tomboy. Do you remember the names? And I was. Yeah. Tom, Bob, and Lucy. Lukey. <laughs> no, but what's his name? What did we call him? Yeah, I forgot all about him. But it was just a bunch of... They were all cowboys, and I was a cowgirl that... And, and that, that shaped my life, I guess. And I'd ditch school and go to Selborn and I'd buy a little baby calf. And it was sickly gonna die. And, and they would bring it home for me. And I'd <coughs> put one of those little sheds out in the back. And at some nights I'd sit out all night with a little baby calf and nurse him back to health and get him going again. Then I'd go buy another one. Did your mom know it was in there? Yeah, okay. my mom did. Yeah, she she didn't care what I was doing. Hmm. <laughs> she was too busy chasing Larry. Right. And Larry was five years old. He still had a bottle. And, <laughs> and he cussed like a little sailor. Oh my, he was funny. And he wanted a bottle. <laughs> he sounded, oh, he, he had a mouth you would not believe. And he'd get mad now. I'm going to go see Granny. Granny, he, Granny and Jim, Mom's parents lived up about three blocks away, and he'd take off. I'm going to Granny's. <laughs> he was a cute little stinker. Yeah. And he was so grown up the night that my dad died. Larry went down to the creek, and he sat down there all by himself and cried. And then he never cried again. Oh, I did not know oh. that. But he was old enough to know something really changed in their life. And, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about the fight that happened on the night that your dad had the heart attack? Was, oh, did you two have a fight, or is that something? Yeah, you that. Just, yeah, well, we don't were understand. fighting over. Yeah, me running around with three boys. Yeah. So he, then he, you come he, home he, and think that was cool. He, he came home and he had a heart attack. Mm, yeah, but not because of that or nothing. It was just And happened. you knew now that? I, I didn't know that, but now I do. But now you do. Yeah. But yeah. did you wear that guilt for a while? Oh, I did. Yeah. I did, yeah. So anything that needed done, I tried to do without Jim, without, you know, run, run for my dad. And, oh, and something else that happened to me that, then that, Running a filling station, I learned there was a man that, and I put this in my book, I think, but he would come by about closing time every night. We stayed out until 10 at night. And he, he always wanted fuel oil, which was in a barrel around the side of the house. 
And of course it was me, go get it. And he'd come back there with me and he would expose himself. And he did that so much. And it's like, I was scared to death of this man, but I couldn't tell my mom because I didn't want her to worry. I didn't want her to know what I was going through doing that. And so finally, well, of course, I still was going to church with mom every Sunday. I was really raised Catholic, you know. But anyhow, I looked up one Sunday morning and the guy taking the collection was that son of a gun that was exposing himself to me every night. And I went to the police about it. They wouldn't do nothing. And, yeah, yeah. So you were just kind of fight for yourself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. good upstanding Catholic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you have any girlfriends when you were a teenager? Oh, yeah. Yolanda was my girlfriend. She was a, a sweet, sweet Italian lady. How did you meet her? Oh, well, I used to bunch radishes and onions for her dad. Oh. They lived across the way from me. This was way young. How old? Uh, right after. I was still trying to go to school. I was doing that when my dad died, too. Okay. A bunch of onions. Fifteen cents for a dozen bunch. I did, yeah. Radishes and onions and chopped broccoli. Yeah, it was a hard way to make a living, I'll tell you. But yeah, and then, what year, I don't remember exactly what month it was, but we'd start us back into school, September evidently, and that's when Yolanda and I decided, well I decided, I'm sure, she just went along with whatever I tell her to do, <laughs> but let's run away, I've had enough, I can't do this no more. And so, but we planned it, boy, we planned, we was going to take, oh, we, we took dang near everything we owned, just paper suitcases. <laughs> we packed it all over stuff up. They thought they were just, we were just going to school. And we took off walking. And we, well, we thought that the bus went all the way to Golden. We knew it was going to Golden. We didn't know what was in Golden or what was beyond, but that's where we were in. And so we're walking and walking and walking, and we got tired. And, no, and nobody came along or nothing. Well, we rode the bus. We didn't know the bus stopped at Mount Olivet Cemetery. That's for the end of the route, it turned around. So then we still got a long ways to go to get the golden. And finally we said, let's try hitchhiking. We put out my thumb and the first guy stopped. And, uh, oh God. So we got in, we're just acting like we're really big and we've been shopping with that place. <laughs> but anyhow, we got into golden and their Foss's drugstore, it's still there after that long a time. Anyhow, they give us a room. Now, we're, I was 14 then. Yeah, I was just, I turned 14. And Yolanda, of course, was the same. And Bob, we got all dressed up with makeup and everything, and we're going looking for a job. I can't believe we even got a hotel room, but we did. But we're down at the drugstore and we're walking and there's two guys kept following us. And everywhere we go, there's these two same men. Well, it turned out they were cops. <laughs> and Yolanda's dad, well, how was it? Um, the guy that picked us up recognized Yolanda but never let her. And he called Yolanda's dad and he called mom and she called the school. And they figured out we were, there was the two runaways. <laughs> But, oh my God, they suit, oh, they searched that closet or, or that hotel room and he thought he opened the closet and he heard something clink and he knew he caught us drinking and there was Pepsi in there. <laughs> <laughs> Your favorite so, drink. <laughs> our favorite drink, yeah. But we were so good, we thought. And he took us to the police station then and asked us all these questions and wanted to know where we lived. 
and neither one of us would tell him. We were so damn hungry. But anyhow, he gave us a cop to take us home, and we're not telling you where we live. Just being smart ass. But, but anyhow, when I got home then, that's the first time I met Homer. I was kind of embarrassed. Yeah, the cops break me home at 14 then. Why was he there? How did you meet him? That's, I, he just showed up. He was like a long lost relative in the family. Oh, but I don't know how he found mom. And did you say something to me about he, there was a apartment? You rented an apartment or a room? Yeah, yeah. There, yeah there, that little store and filling station on one side it was a little two bedroom, or I mean two room apartment, and he rented that for mom. So we'll go back to Homer later because he's a big part. But while we're talking about your teenagehood. Um, what other memories do you have of school? And what is like your last memory of school? And what would you, you didn't graduate, correct? Right. So how did that end? Did you just like your 11th year was it? Or when, what do you recall about school or your last well, experience I was there? Well, I was trying to go to school and, and ditching school to go to the sale barns. <laughs> that was pretty important to me. And... No, I didn't finish school. I hated school. Absolutely hated school. And then, so did you go in 11th grade at all? No. 10th grade? 10th, as far as I made it. Okay. Halfway through the 10th. I think you didn't know that. Yeah. And you never regretted that? Oh, God, no. <laughs> I remember, as, I think it was about close to the last day, the teacher would go out of the room and be throw this kid out of the window. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, I was armory. In fact, I used to fight a lot, and they would take me down behind the bleachers and bet on me if I could whip her away. Isn't that often? Yeah, yeah. That explains where I got that, and I never yeah. had to say that moment. Yeah, uh, but then I quit. I said, that's enough. But I didn't tell Mom I quit school for quite a while. She thought I went to school every day. <laughs> I, did, I don't know why I was so protective of my family, and my, especially my mom. But yeah, you were out doing some really ornery things oh, I instead was, of but I couldn't let her know. Being it. respectful and making her proud. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, was there any music you listened to as a teenager? Oh, cowboy. Oh, uh -huh. oh western. Yeah. Did you go to any dances? Yeah, we used to. Let me see. Now, that was after I was married to Homer, when we used to go to those. Okay. Dances up in the mountains. Okay. Is there anything else about your? You tell a story about you set this guy's car on fire in the back because you thought it was an ashtray. Do you remember oh, that? Oh yeah. Story? Tell that one. Oh, I forgot about that. Just a yeah, I don't know why he hung around with us. He was a Bob Dolan was the biggest, oldest guy in the three cowboys, but this guy was a friend of his and a big fat. Well, he played a guitar, that's why we liked him. And anyhow, one night we was all out and partying and drinking and smoking cigarettes and stuff. And well, I thought that was a nice tray in the back of his car. But and what was it? It was, it, I don't know, but it was a it, hole in a his A hole in his upholstery. I caught his damn car on fire. <laughs> Because I think I'd been the car once and had a nice tray in the back seat. <laughs> right. I thought that was what. That had to been like get your adrenaline pumping. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just... Well, then it sounds like your teenagehood was a little bit more rewarding or fun than your childhood. Oh, yeah. Because you took control. I did. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. You go to the cell barn. <laughs> Yeah. Anything else you want to say about your teenagehood? Because I know after you met Homer, things changed quickly. And you grew up fast. Yeah, I had to. Okay. Yeah.